Well, that was, um, that was interesting. Hi, I'm James Fowles. I'm here to answer your questions about the British Grand Prix, of which this week there's a lot of them. First, we want to thank you. This is the most questions we have ever had. And we're really blown away by the amount of interest people have in it. All of the questions are centered around one item, which is quite clearly what happened? What happened at the end of the race? And today's race debrief is really all about that, giving a breakdown of the circumstances that created it and really looking forward to the next weekend, what we think will happen as a result of it. If we go back to qualifying, it's important for everyone to understand that both ourselves and also Verstappen lost some of our tires due to cuts and gravel. In the case of Valtteri, his rear right tire from his run on medium was damaged sufficiently that we weren't allowed to run it in the race. So we had to take a tire out of his second medium allocation. That doesn't mean we couldn't run medium with him during the race, but it would be a compromise set. Verstappen had the same thing. I believe both rears in his case were taken away. And in the case of Lewis who spun, all four of those tires were unusable. So as we went into the race, a two stop was very compromised. The fastest two stop would be a medium, hard, medium, but now we didn't really have a strong enough set of mediums in the case of Valtteri and in the case of Lewis, we didn't have that tire set available. So you'd have to run medium, hard, soft. The significance of that is making a two stop work with the soft tire, a very weak tire around Silverstone, where most of the competitors at the beginning were dying to get off it as quickly as possible, is tricky. So if we review the two stop options that we had, and especially reviewing that of Valtteri's, we considered it and talked about it later on in the race, but on all of the models, it was incredibly difficult to catch back up to Verstappen, let alone overtake him. Now, it was available to him most of the time as a possibility, but we never considered it. The hard was actually the fastest of all tyres available to us, and that's what made the proposition of a two-stop all the more difficult. We had no concerns in terms of tyre durability as we were running the race. There was no indication from any of our systems that there was going to be a failure. So you would rarely stop your car and put it behind the competitors on a whim unless you were guaranteed that two-stop would work. If we talk about the vibrations, there was a lot of questions around that. The vibrations we're able to see on our data. Uh, we have huge amounts of sensors on the car, as you would imagine, and some of those allow us to detect if the tires are suffering, whether it's the front right or front left, or rears for that matter, any additional vibration from what we expect. We use that to monitor the condition because drivers can lock up in the race or can have other issues, and we have limits that we're happy to run a tire to, limits that we've established over many years. There was vibration, it actually appeared very early on in Valtteri's stint, and you would have heard him on the radio several times, lap 40 being the latest of those, but also would have heard us come on and indicate to him that we can see a vibration, just an indication that we're using the data to support him. But at no time were those vibrations a worry. And in the case of Lewis, those vibrations didn't exist. With Valtteri, the vibrations were to the point where it was frustrating him, but not to the point where he was losing a dramatic amount of performance. If we take Valtteri's race relative to Lewis, it was always going to be more difficult. He was caught up behind Lewis and having to push very hard in order to keep up. He was using speed, especially in the high speed corners, in order to stay close to Lewis. And I have no doubt that he would have worn his tire more than Lewis had. It's always easier when you're in free air and controlling your own race. That may have been a contributing factor, but the reality was the failure took place within seconds of each other. And given the difference in their tire condition, it'd be unlikely that that's all of the contribution. As we were getting into the dying stages of the race, the last few laps, by that point, you're not going to stop for a safety car anymore. The drivers know that the gaps between them are so enormous, both between Valtteri and Verstappen and also between Valtteri and Lewis, that nothing's really going to happen save for an enormous problem. Kimi went off the track as we went through the section down 11, 12, 13 and put debris on the side of it. Both of our drivers went through it, but there was no systems that flagged up to let us know that there was any cuts or punctures at that stage. The failure of Valtteri's tyre was instantaneous. The pressure loss was immediate and it also took place at absolutely the worst time, which is the end of the race, and the worst place, which is just as he passed the pit entry. He had to do an entire lap now on a deflated tyre and that's why he dropped back from the position he was in all the way back into 11th and that sealed his fate for the weekend. In terms of Lewis, the failure actually happened around turn 6-7. We have a plot here that we thought would be useful to demonstrate to everyone a little bit of what was going on with Lewis. There's three laps on here, and just to explain what you're seeing across the x-axis is 
the lap, its distance. So as you go across to the right hand side, that's as you traverse the lap. The big lines going up and down is car speed. So you can see how the car is effectively, how fast it is through the different corners and what's going on across the lap. This is a graph that we use often and it allows us to describe what's going on with the car in quite a simple way. Three laps are slow chosen here. The first is when Lewis was still pushing, managing in the high speed corners, but still pushing. And then to be clear, to take a hard to the end of the race, you need to manage it. You can't push that tire flat out. And we knew that and Lewis knew that as well as did Valtteri. Turn one, two is a corner that's flat in qualifying. You can actually see here on the far left hand side of the plot that on lap 45, he wasn't flat. He was taking a little bit of speed out, but look how much speed he takes out of it before the failures. That's not because he was worried. That's because we're getting to the end of the race and he knows that that management is even more important. What you can see here is the third line represents when the failure happened, it happened around turn six, turn seven. One of the questions was, in fact, many of them, how impressive was Lewis in getting the car home? The answer is incredibly impressive. Especially, I would urge you to look down towards turn 15, a very high speed right hand corner, remembering it's the front left that's gone, the tire that we loaded in that circumstance. And as he exits, he properly guns it on the way down into the last sequence of corners to get across the line. The fact he took that apex speed with fundamentally three tires on the car is mighty. And he did a great job getting it across the line. In the case of, could we have done things differently? With Lewis, undoubtedly, there was an opportunity to stop the car. It happened on the very last lap of the race. If we had stopped prior to that, we would have given the win to Verstappen. And it's important to understand that. If he had stayed out and we had stopped and dropped behind, I'm fairly sure Red Bull would have stayed out. Furthermore, Red Bull stopping, which was for fundamentally the fastest lap reason, as well as perhaps consideration of a tire durability, cost them the race win on Sunday. As we sit here now, we should have brought that car in. The reason why we didn't was the car was 30 seconds up the road. Lewis was already driving many seconds off the pace and all he needed to do was to do the last lap of the race in the middle of the road. You're not that nervous about running on a tire for another lap and there's risks involved in doing another pit stop. Driving around one more lap out there in the middle of the road up to 15 seconds off the pace if you wanted to can sometimes be a safer proposition. Clearly as we stand here now, that was a mistake and one that could have cost us dearly. Unfortunately didn't on the day. In terms of what happens now, clearly we're going to run again at Silverstone this weekend, the same way we did in Austria. We have a wealth of data available to us, but the compounds are going to go one step softer this week. So the hard that we used on Sunday, the tyre that everyone used for that period of time, is now gone. The medium tyre effectively will become the new hard. And the medium is a compound called a C2. We'll have the C3 and something called the C4 as well. That will represent the softest compounds. Now, clearly, we're going to go into Silverstone now, eyes wide open. The reality behind it is that on Sunday, the safety car coming out as early as it did pushed all the competitors into that very long one stop. People will be more cautious now, and I'm sure you'll see a lot more two stops, which may just be an effect of the compounds as well. A lot of questions this year, but also specifically to this race, were around DAS and whether or not that contributed towards the failure or not. I can categorically say the answer is no. There's a few reasons behind that. First of all, it wasn't used any time really towards the element of the failure. In fact, it was used really towards the early stage of the races, and that's it. Next, Sainz also experienced a failure, and clearly they're not running a DAS system on their car, and a number of other competitors complained of the vibration that Valtteri was. This wasn't contained to us, but clearly we were on the worst side of the problem. Thank you very much for all of your questions. Hopefully, we've answered everything that you asked and we look forward to answering your questions again after the next Grand Prix.